Welcome back to Redline Ranch. I'm Nicholas, and today we're gonna be manual transmission swapping my 1973 Toyota Hilux. I got this thing fixed up back on the road, took it for a test drive, and realized there were some issues and some downfalls to it. And we're gonna get into it and address what's going on. The Hilux is ready to hit the streets and see how it does on the road. I'm super excited. I've got tools, I've got a spare tire, and uh, that's about it. We're gonna go for a beautiful drive. Let's see how she does. Nice morning start. So the Hilux drives really well in some aspects. It's not crazy loud. The ride quality isn't that bad. Potholes can be a little bit rough, but we're on 14 inch wheels. Um, the alignment is atrocious, but that is my fault for the steering. I didn't actually really align it very well. I eyeball aligned it, literally didn't take a tape measure. But the biggest issue is this darn transmission, the transmission cannot decide what gear it wants to be in. I think it's been in first, second, and third at 40 miles an hour. It barely keeps up with, I, see what I mean? I'm not doing anything with the gas pedal. The gas pedal is just chilling and the transmission just wants to kill itself, I guess. This thing needs something to change, whether it be the automatic or the engine or both, the steering. So, no traffic. This is, this is all she's got. This is all she's got. That engine does not sound super happy either. Literally foot to the floor. So, this might be an interesting drive. Some, some 86. Only the worst for the Toyotas. They really don't care. It's in drive right now, and if you just let off the gas, it'll start shoving you down into like, there we go. Just shoves you down into second gear. Oh. Yep, there we go. This is what I'm talking about. And it just decides it can't find a, a gear to save its life. So I'm gonna either have to put a transmission in it. I might service this transmission and see if it helps. Uh, maybe this thing just gets a whole drivetrain swap. We got a straightaway. We're doing a top speed run. 70. Holy shit, 75. Okay, I heard tires going squeak, squeak, squeak over that bump. Holy crap, this thing is scary as all. Get out at 80 miles an hour. Woo! And I smell a little bit of coolant. We might pull over and assess here in just a second. We are here in Golden, New Mexico. We're on our way to Madrid, New Mexico, and I always like stopping at this little Henderson store. I'm really enjoying the Hilux. It's such a cool vehicle, and I get so many awesome looks and waves and just acknowledgement in this thing. I love driving it around, and I cannot wait to see what we can do with this thing. I'm really excited to have it back on the road. We made it to Madrid, and we are in front of the Mineshaft Tavern. This is an awesome little town. It's absolutely gorgeous. There are tons of small boutiques and art galleries and different little, just small local shops. It is definitely a super friendly little town and I am very thankful to live as close as I do. The odometer on this thing looks like it works. You can see it's going from four to five right now. But we have driven about 65, 70 miles and the mile marker has not moved once. The tenths of a mile has moved a hundred times, but it just stays at 39. So that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. One of the things I've noticed driving though, is that these brakes, so much better, very responsive. They feel like actual brakes and I'm not feeling like I uh, can't stop. So that's awesome, that, that, that's a good step. After taking it for all of that drive and realizing that this transmission is really just garbage. It robs a bunch of power, it can't stay in gear, 
it was really jerky. It actually hurt my neck from how much it was and how aggressively it was downshifting. So I decided I was going to be putting the manual transmission from my 1988 Toyota pickup into it. I got that transmission when I got my 1988 Toyota pickup that I actually turned into my turbo street truck. I've got videos linked about that on my channel. It's an awesome build and worth the watch. It left me with some spare parts when I did that swap. So I've got a G57 manual transmission, which is a five speed that bolts to the 18R that is in the Hilux, as well as clutch lines, a clutch master and slave cylinder. And I have the clutch assembly from an 04 Tacoma that I used for an engine swap years ago. We're gonna be putting a bunch of miscellaneous Toyota parts into this build. Hopefully everything goes super smooth and well. I think that the transmission's gonna bolt in and the drive shaft might even work. Who knows, that's how the turbo truck did. And we're gonna get this thing back on the road and a hundred times better than it was. Let's see if she still starts so good. No. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of power. It's tough for it to get going on a slight hill. We're gonna be getting back under the Hilux, so we're gonna get it up in the air and we're gonna start working on the undercarriage. We're gonna get this thing on jack stands, get the wheels off just to give us more room to work. Then we can start dropping the automatic transmission. It shouldn't be too hard. It's actually just gonna be removing a few bolts. Two wheel drive makes it pretty easy. There's no transfer case. The automatic transmission lines are gonna be the biggest pain in the butt just cause they're gonna make a mess. Then once we get this automatic transmission out, I can dig out the five speed and we can start mocking that up. But I better get to work otherwise this is all just going to be talk. We got the Hilux transmission out. This thing is actually really small, but that's okay. We got everything out. I went ahead and I dug around in my pile of flywheels and clutches, and I found the 88 Toyota four cylinder clutch that I have. I don't really remember the condition it's in. I hope it's in pretty good condition. And buried over here in my pile of engine and transmission is the transmission that came out of my 88 pickup. So I'm gonna pull this out. We're gonna get it prepped to go in. We're gonna get the pilot bearing and stuff together. I'm not buying new parts for this. I'm just gonna put it back together as is. I'm not sure how long it's gonna to be together. And I'm not sure how long this engine is gonna be in here. I would not mind upgrading this engine to something with a little bit more power. But for now, we're gonna keep that little 18R. We're gonna throw a five speed in it. And we're gonna see if we can actually get this thing driving down the road. So I'm gonna finish digging that out try and get it up under there. Hopefully everything bolts together smooth. And I'm thinking that the transmission mount might actually even work. Now that both the transmissions are out and sitting next to each other, we can do a little bit of a comparison. They look like they are definitely the same bell housing, which is good. Then when we go looking at them further, you can see that they are what looks like identical in length, which would be really, really awesome. That would mean that we don't have to modify the drive shaft using the stock drive shaft would save a lot of time and money and would just be really rad to not have to modify anything too crazy to put a manual transmission in here. Also, I have the hydraulics from the 88 pickup and the clutch pedal from the Tacoma. This is the only thing I think might be an issue. We've got all these parts to work with. I'm gonna start by taking the shifter off of this, covering that hole up and getting this transmission lifted into place and bolted to the engine. Well, to say this clutch is less than ideal is an understatement. 
but there's still a little bit of life left on it. So I went ahead and I got some 220 and we're gonna actually take this down and make it bare metal again. I might even get the die grinder out with a nice light wheel and just take the rust off. We have refurbished the flywheel, the pressure plate, and the clutch disc, which, like I said, has quite a bit of life left on it. So we're gonna throw it back in because I don't think this thing's gonna make crazy high horsepower or anything like that. And it slides on pretty smooth. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna now go under there, we're gonna throw this flywheel on, and then we're gonna throw the clutch together. Then we can throw the transmission in and start mocking up the transmission mount, which, like I said, I think I'm gonna need to do a little bit of fabrication on. I realized I need a pilot bearing and that the engine in here doesn't have one and I didn't have one with the clutch kit. But I do have this mock-up engine that I have. It's a 3RZ and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull the pilot bearing out of this thing and I'm pretty sure it's the right one. And success. So this bearing is definitely the proper bearing. Oh, look at that. Looks like it's gonna be fantastic. One of the things I gotta take care of before I get too far into this is actually pulling off this automatic transmission shifter because I will no longer be needing that. We got just about everything ready and it is finally time to get this transmission lifted up into place. So I'm actually gonna go ahead, I'm gonna push it over there and I'm just gonna get under it and push it into place. I've done it a few times. I just get under the transmission, bench press it into place and it usually works pretty good for me, especially on these smaller two wheel drive transmissions. So I'm gonna get under there. We're gonna get this thing up into place, a couple bolts into it and then we can start looking at how we can get this transmission cross member in. Unfortunately, when you're looking under there, the cross member bolts on the very rear of the cross member line up just perfect with the bolts for the mount. And on this, the bolts at the rear of the cross member are quite a ways back from the center of this mount. So my options are I can cut the front of this mount out and move it forward probably an entire mount's worth and have to cut some of this out of the center. Or I can manufacture an entire cross member. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do, but if I cut back, I'm gonna have to cut this entire e-brake assembly off no matter what. So I think I might just actually move all of, remove all of that and manufacture one out of some of this two inch by two inch quarter thick angle iron. All right, so I went ahead and I moved this trans mount back. It is definitely not the best in the world, but it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead now, and since I took out a lot of material here, I've got some eighth inch plate. I'm going to clean this up and come out and over with some eighth inch plate that comes up that is going to do in essence what this is doing now. All right, I got this cross member mocked up. It's definitely not finished, and it is becoming very apparent that I'm still hitting the transmission with this cross member. So it's just not ideally built for this transmission, obviously. So I'm gonna go back to what I was gonna do originally. I'm gonna pull this out and I'm actually going to put an entire custom transmission cross member in. I'm gonna utilize some of the original bolt points, some quarter inch angle iron and some flat stock. And I'm gonna produce a box to put the mount in and then just run some angle from the factory bolt holes to the box that I build. And it'll be plenty strong enough. I'm not worried about that. I was just hoping to save a little bit of time by using this, but pretty obviously it's not gonna work. So we're gonna get rid of it. Thank you. 
all right so we got this box made up and it's super stout not going anywhere but when i went to go mock it up on the transmission you can see that it's like cut out here well the transmission hits right here so i'm gonna come down over and back up on the front of this give it a nice cut out and plenty of room for the transmission that way we're not rubbing anything and we can still have a rubber mount because that's the whole point of the transmission mount is that it's isolated from everything so i don't want metal rubbing on this because that'll cause a lot of vibrations not to mention wear through the transmission aluminum casing we went ahead and you saw we notched the entire bracket because the transmission was still contacting just that little itty bitty box you can see up in here that we've got it on you can see right down here where it was contacting took out a real good amount there's still plenty of clearance and i have these brackets right here these are the factory brackets what i think i'm going to just do is attach them like this to these brackets and then weld straight to this i can use the factory bolts through here i can also add some bolts up in the upright i think it'll be super stout i do not have any question about that holding on and it'll be nice and simple so i'm going to cut a chunk for here cut a chunk for the other side and then start mocking up and this transmission cross member should come together rather quickly from here Finish welding this out. I put some 45s or some angles on these so they look better. Shouldn't touch it. I just put a coat of paint on it. It should be dry to the touch in about 20 minutes is what it says. So while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna jump into the cab and we're gonna start working on the pedal assembly because I'm gonna need that soon. And I've got that pedal assembly out of the Tacoma and I'm really hoping that it fits in here. This is the pedal assembly we're working with. It's out of a Tacoma. It is separate from the brake assembly. When I was looking, there's a third hole in the top of the firewall right there that actually looks like it might line up once everything's through. So I wanna make sure that we're taking our time to try and make sure this is lined up as best as possible punch a couple holes through for the studs and hopefully everything lines up real well. And this should honestly be fairly simple. Then I'm probably gonna have to do something about this brake pedal. Either swap the pedal out or cut it. And I haven't really decided which I was gonna do yet. All right, and we loosely have mocked up the clutch pedal. So now we can go ahead and we can start mocking up these hydraulics. So I'm gonna route all of this the way it needs to be routed. Hopefully get it in there pretty good. And then we're gonna put this master cylinder in and bolt the slave cylinder to the transmission. That should be all we need. And then the clutch will be connected. We Look at that. The drive shaft just bolted right up, went straight into the transmission, no issues. Only thing I have left is that hole there. So I'm gonna cut this floor open a little bit. This is the template, give or take, that I have. This is out of the 88 pickup. I'm gonna trace that, not exactly, but go up further and see if I can get just enough room to get this shifter in. All right, so we got a lot of things done. We've got the clutch hydraulics in. We've got the line routed. I put some rubber on it because it's kind of rubbing the 
firewall there just for some clearance. And we got the slave cylinder in. It's bolted in place, the starter, all of the bell housing bolts, everything there is bolted in place. Down below, the cross member is nice and tight everywhere. We got the factory drive shaft from the automatic to work. That was awesome, it fits perfect. I was actually really happy about that. The factory e-brake is not gonna work. I'm gonna have to make a bracket off of my cross member. Also the front cable from the cross member forward to in the cab is seized. So the emergency brake or parking brake didn't work anyway. Inside the cab, we got the shifter in place. We got the boot that I had in place, which isn't the best, but it's better than nothing. We're gonna have to do something about that pedal situation. For now, I'm actually just gonna grind off a couple inches just so they're not touching and I have a little bit of clearance. That should be enough to be able to drive it around, take it for a test drive. I feel like I could get used to it. We're getting close. All I have left is to put the wheels tires back on make sure it starts i think i'm going to need the park sensor out of that or to jump some wires in the connector up here and then we can go for a test drive all right that's a good sign who thinks it'll do a burnout Look at that. Oh, it was kind of spinning the tire. We five speed swapped a Toyota Hilux. Look at that. This thing moved forward and backward with a five speed transmission. And I can guarantee it is going to run a thousand times better than that automatic over there that we tore out of it. Let's manually select our gears and get out of this garage. All right, we finished the Hilux up and it is time to take it for another test drive. Excited to see how it feels with the five speed and see how it feels when the transmission isn't just making it absolutely miserable to drive. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump in it, we're gonna take it for a drive and we're gonna see how the new transmission feels. We're in the Hilux, let's take it for a drive. Starts up as good as it always has. Oh my God, so much better. This is a night and day difference. I am genuinely, it makes driving this thing a whole different experience. This thing almost feels like it's peppy for lack of a better term. It feels amazing, takes third gear uphill it's a five speed, which I don't know if they ever came with a five speed in 1973. Oh, and the previous owner actually texted me and said they had a good rear window lying around. So I was like, let me know when and I will come pick it up. This feels so much better. I am stoked. I'm beyond excited. All five gears are there. The clutch seems to be working great. It is at the exact same height as the brake pedal and it's got full range of motion. The steering's of course still not great. I need to hook up the speedometer. I, I, I forgot to do that. So I'm actually probably peeing some gear oil out. So I'm gonna get back to my house, make sure this thing's got gear oil in it because I didn't even double check that and do a couple other things to make sure this is dialed for road use. This has completely changed how I feel about this truck. I'm really excited to take it for a longer drive now. I need some more comfortable seats and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. If you know of any seats that fit really well in a small pickup, let me know down below in the comments because these seats are uncomfortable. They really are. I'd like something that is a little bit smaller, maybe something that can recline. Overall, truck feels a ton better. 
a manual transmission was definitely the right choice to make in this case. I had everything laying around in my shop. I genuinely did not spend a single dime putting a manual transmission in this thing. I used a bunch of used parts. I fabricated some things and all in all, it worked out fantastic. So thank you for watching thank you for subscribing. And I really hope to catch you on the next one.